Hello guys, welcome to Firewise Workshop and in today's video I'm gonna be showing you the oscillations in RLC and RC sockets etc. So there is my amplifier board. Now it is made up of, of two op amps or operational amplifiers that just amplifies the audio signal from my USB sound card that goes into my PC. And there is my oscilloscope. It's a USB oscilloscope. It's a hand tag oscilloscope. It's just a basic oscilloscope. Of course, I didn't spend too much on the oscilloscope. I'm really sorry for that, guys. But however, in USA, these things are real cheap. These are dirt cheap. It's around sixty to seventy dollars. But in India, it's about one hundred and fifty dollars. You do all that tax and all that bullshit. So I won't talk in detail about that but this is just a quick overview of my function generator before i start the video the main video i'm just gonna give you a brief introduction about what i'm gonna be using as a function generator now a function generator is a device that is used to generate sinusoidal voltages of different frequencies and amplitude and offset you're just gonna learn about them in i i think maybe in your second semester or third semester well i don't know about that because i've learned all that in 10th so I just really don't care so this is my function generator this knob over here is used to adjust the offset of the voltage I have two channels that I can draw from this function generator right now this is the channel number two and these two pins is the channel number one over here if I connect the jumper to over here I'm gonna have channel number two on these two probes and if I connect it to here I'm gonna have my channel number one so the, I'm just gonna use the channel number two. These two potentiometer knobs are used to adjust the crossover distortion of my op amp. Every op amp circuit has crossover distortion. Now, what is crossover distortion? I'm just gonna give you a brief about that. Crossover distortion is basically when the op amp switches from sinking current to sourcing current. So it just creates a bit of gap in the sinusoidal voltage and it just, just does not look pretty. So we're gonna adjust that so that the op amp only sinks or only source the current from uh, basically uh, to power the circuit whatever we have connected on the terminals and the greater the amount of current you draw the more is going to be the crossover distortion and of course it's powered by my pc this is just an amplifier board it consists of two operational amplifiers and it's powered by my pc using this 3.5 mm jack that I connect to a USB sound card. So this is dead simple. It's powered by this laptop charger that provides me with plus minus 5 volts or 6 volts DC. So that's basically, I've, I've just used a type of center tap if you know about that, what I'm talking about. So it just provides me minus 5, 0 and 5 volts as an output so that I can power my operational amplifiers with a differential voltage. So that's all about my function generator. Let's move to the oscilloscope. Now, this is my oscilloscope. It's a PC USB oscilloscope that has a bandwidth of 20 megahertz and can capture up to 48 million samples per second. So, and it uh, it basically uses my PC to display what waveform it captures to its two channels. That is channel number one and channel number two, which is which i have connected the bnc probe these are this is basically a bnc connected to which i have connected my probe these are 1x 10x probes so these are two probes and the bandwidth on these probes is 80 megahertz of course these they are just standard probes and they have this clip over here that is connected to the ground and over here that is your test lead basically you pull that back and you attach whatever wire you want in that and just close it it's just holds the wire in place that's all and this is the blue one the blue wing one is for my channel number two and this is for my channel number one you can see that on the oscilloscope of course on my pc i'm using a software called hantax 6022 be software to operate my oscilloscope however i have a model of uh, Hantax 6022 bl because i have a 16 channel logic analyzer inbuilt with my oscilloscope so that's all guys over here you can see the inputs for the logic analyzer this is a 16 channel logic analyzer and this is for calibrating the probes i'm just gonna move quickly move to the software so that will be in a bit 
and this is connected to my PC via this USB cable. This is a USB type A to type B cable. I guess it's the other way around. It's a type B to type A. So this or this cable is also used in your Arduino Uno, etc. So I'm just gonna move to my computer. Now this is a software that we use for our oscilloscope. Okay, so I'm just gonna point, point my cursor. This is to adjust the time base of the oscilloscope. Uh, this is to adjust the voltage. Uh, that's the voltage. That's the voltage per division of channel number one. This is to adjust the voltage per division of channel number two. And these are the three settings that you are basically gonna need. Of course, you have other measurement options over here. You have all the options over here, but you don't need to know that. It's just simple stuff that I'm gonna be doing today. I'm just gonna discuss it in a later video when I'll do a review of my oscilloscope. So stay tuned for that, guys. So over here, you can see my channel number one is being displayed over here. You can see this is a line for my channel number one. Now, if I connect my channel number one to the inbuilt uh, square wave generator of my oscilloscope. Wait for a second, guys. Uh, just wait. Let me just switch to a 10x and set the trigger voltage over here. Now, let's just... Over here you can see the beautiful square waves now similarly if i connect my channel number two to the my square wave generator you can see it also shows those beautiful square waves of course i'm just going to increase the voltage a bit so you can see it a bit more clearly okay you can see our beautiful square waves of course i've attenuated my probes correctly so it does not have any rising or falling edge something like that because of course otherwise you're just gonna have spikes over there and here over here you know all that kind of nonsense because i've attenuated my probes very well so that is not present on my oscilloscope that's all guys that you need to know now let's just move to our breadboard setup well i forgot to tell you one thing over here you can see all these grids are made these are crisscross patterns that are on the screen so basically one division of this grid is equal to the time base that uh, the time per division that we have set on the time scale over here and the vertical the vertical grid over here the one grid is equal to the voltage that we have set over here so basically i'm sorry my probe is at 10x so okay so basically i've set it to 2 volts so it means if i move one division it's going to be 2 volts of voltage so for one division we have two volts if our line moves like this so it's just gonna be just just gonna rise by two volts so that you can keep in mind while you're watching my experiment so i'm really sorry guys i just forgot to mention the most important thing sorry <laughs> so now we're just gonna quickly assemble our circuit on a breadboard if you don't know what a breadboard is you can watch my video in which i just covered the basics of the breadboard and also show you a bunch of things that you can plug into the breadboard first of all i'm just gonna start with the capacitor now these are 0 0.001 microfarad i guess no it's i think 0 0.0 0 0.22 microfarad capacitors these are ceramic capacitors that are used in ac signals of course these, these can handle ac voltages because these are not polarized like the electrolytic capacitors so i'm just gonna plug it in the breadboard I'm gonna use two capacitors in parallel so I get double the capacitance over here you can see I've just plugged these capacitors in now I'm just gonna plug in the resistors now the resistors will be used to measure the current because it will just form a current shunt so whenever current will be drawn from uh, by these capacitors the, it will create a voltage drop across the resistors so thus we can measure the current I'm just gonna use to 10 uh, 10 kilo uh, 10 ohm resistor not kilo ohm I'm just so fond of saying 10 kilo ohm that I said 10 kilo ohm these are two 10 ohm resistor and I'm just gonna put them in series no, no not in series I'm sorry in, in parallel uh, I don't know what I'm saying today actually it's just too late in night so I'm just gonna put that in parallel now I'm just gonna connect my positive lead to the capacitor leg over here you can see now this will connect to my function generator is positive 
the negative weight is just gonna be connected the capacitors negative weight is just gonna be connected to my oscilloscope so I'm just gonna connect a jumper wire over here and just connect this thing to my probe number one that's the yellow probe I just plugged in my probe number one to this now what I'm gonna do is over here I'm just gonna connect the negative lead of this thing to the resistor and then it will go to the ground it will go to the ground there you go just like that now over here the negative lead of my oscilloscope so both of these have their negative probes that are just going to be connected so if i just connect one probe then it will automatically connect the other probe because these two are shorted internally so i'm just going to use well i guess we don't have any more jumpers i'll be right back so i got another jumper and over here i'm just gonna connect it to this point over here on the breadboard and just connect it to the ground of my probes okay i'm just connecting to the ground of my channel number two and the channel number two is gonna be connected to the positive of the capacitors I'm sorry, oops. There you go. I've just connected my channel number two to the negative, if you can see over here. You can see, it's just connected to the channel number two. So what will happen is, it's just gonna measure the total voltage across the ground and the capacitor, including the resistors in the middle. And over here this probe over here that is connected to via this purple wire to the middle over here will measure the current basically the voltage across the resistors the resistors are connected between the ground and the other terminal of the capacitor so it will measure the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the resistor can give us the current so we just want the current representation we don't want the exact current so it will be okay for us Okay, so let's just fire up our function generator. Let's just turn to over here. Over here I have my function generator application that I'm going to be using. Over here I've set the channel number 2 to 3.5 kilohertz. And I'm just going to press the out button that's going to activate our function generator. There you go. Our function generator has been activated. Let's just minimize it. Over here you can see the yellow one is the channel number one that is uh, connected to the capacitor. Uh, actually it's not connected to the capacitor, it's just correct connected to the current chain. So basically the yellow is a representation of our current across the capacitor and the green one is the representation of the voltage across the capacitor. Over here you can see the yellow probe is our channel number one that is connected to the end of the resistor that, that's the channel number one that's connected to the end of the resistor that's going to measure the current between the ground and the resistor the channel number two that is the blue one is connected between the capacitors so over here you can see i'm just measuring uh, uh this uh on channel number two i'm just going to be measuring the voltage across capacitor over here you can see how beautiful our sine waves are looking right this is the voltage and the current is leading the voltage by almost pi by 2. Of course, it's not just going to be pi by 2 because of the ESR value of the capacitor. That's the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor and the resistance that we have introduced ourselves. That's the 5 ohm resistor. Of course, you know that this is an RC circuit, not a capacitor across an AC source. So, <laughs> you got to admit the beauty of the sine waves i'm just so happy to see that uh, i'm just gonna zoom it in a bit you can see over here you can see it's almost it's almost pi by four but not exactly pi by four so i'm just happy with this result 
and I shared it with you guys because it just makes a hell easy to understand the concept when you have the proper circuit demonstration in front of you so over here this is a puny circuit okay I'm just gonna point my camera to my oscilloscope and there is our function generator and there is my USB sound card that I've used and which is plugged into my PC now don't worry about that hole because of course I've custom fabricated that USB port over there so I needed to remove some panels I'm sorry for that I'm just gonna fix that in a moment so over here now I'm just gonna keep the tripod down you can just appreciate the beauty of the sine waves that we are getting so basically the current is leading the voltage by a phase angle of almost pi by 2 um, I guess that's pi by 2 mm, well I don't know that I guess that's pi by 2 so I hope you like this video if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like stuff like this and of course I'll be uploading the video of an RL and an LC circuit really really soon and an RLC circuit also so stay tuned for that I'm not just gonna explain the basics that I explained in this video so it will be a straightforward video okay so stay tuned goodbye